If you already hate emails, then let me give you another reason to dislike them. I just learned that the average email can have a footprint of approximately 4 grams of CO2 emissions. So basically every one word email you send, like just saying thanks. This means that all the emails sent around the world in one day can approximately create more than 1 million tons of CO2 emissions. That's equivalent to burning over 1 million pounds of coal all in one day. Now, I'm not telling you to quit emails, although wouldn't that be nice? But there are ways we can cultivate more eco-friendly email habits. In this episode of Act Now, sponsored by Samsung Memory, I'm going to go through my inbox to break down the energy used behind each email we send and also offer some tips to reduce clutter. Emails, much like anything else we do online, produce carbon emissions since they go through a chain of electronics that burn a lot of energy. From your computer, to the router, to the wires outside your house that connect to the telecom's company, then to whomever's on the receiving end, and then the email will sit on a server farm until it's deleted. All that energy used in the process mostly comes from fossil fuels, and as we've learned before, fossil fuels are the largest source of greenhouse gas emissions around the world. Electricity and heat production make up about 25% of global emissions. Emails are within that percentage of electricity use. According to Mike Berners Lee's book, How Bad Are Bananas? The Carbon Footprint of Everything, plain text spam emails have a carbon footprint of 0.3 grams of CO2 emissions. Now the average email, which is mostly what you and I send daily, has a footprint of approximately 4 grams of CO2 emissions. And if you have a lengthy attachment within the email or customized signature plates, the footprint can average out to approximately 50 grams of CO2 emissions. Now, I get about 200 emails a day, mostly generic PR pitches, and about a third of them come with unnecessary attachments. But for the sake of a basic example, let's just say that all the emails I get in one day are normal emails equivalent to 4 grams of CO2. If I do the math right, my daily email carbon footprint is averaging to 800 grams of carbon dioxide emissions. That means that in one year, my email carbon footprint is approximately 643 pounds of carbon dioxide emissions. That's enough carbon dioxide to drive 733 miles or even charge my phone 35,478 times. I could take a flight from here to Chicago. Sending emails is not the only thing that consumes lots of energy though. Storing is bad too. Stored emails or any other type of stored data that is not accessed and just sits on a server is oftentimes referred to as dark data. Dark data is often occupying space on servers and data centers, which also require large amounts of energy to run on. The energy used to store dark data around the world in 2020 was estimated to be equivalent to 6.4 million metric tons of CO2 emissions, according to Veritas Technologies. At the end of the day though, the problem is not the emails. It's the energy source. Is it from fossil fuels or is it renewable energy? If we were all to send fewer emails, the overall impact would be a small splash in the pond though. Let's use British emails to help conceptualize this. A 2019 study from renewable electricity firm Ovo Energy found that if every person in England sent one less email daily, it would save approximately 16,433 metric tons of CO2 a year. For perspective, the UK's annual greenhouse gas emissions in 2019 were 435.2 million metric tons. That's far below 1%. This goes to show that the issue is much bigger than a single email. And to appease your eco guilt, just remember that the responsibility does not fall on you. It falls on companies and governments to be carbon neutral and invest in clean energy, as well as more efficient computer chips and storage. However, if you're on your own personal net zero mission, here are some tips to clean up your emails. And if you're not doing this for the planet, then hey, these tips are helpful for those of us who aren't the most organized with our inbox. Tip number one, send fewer emails. Why not help people, aka me, get to inbox zero by sending them fewer emails? Spare the neat list, yays, thanks, or have a good weekend, your welcomes, all that good stuff. Because at the end of the day, you'll not only be saving CO2 emissions, but you'll be saving people's time. Tip number two, unattach. Ask yourself, is the attachment necessary? Sometimes attachments are just a PDF version of the email's content, which does not make much sense. But if you ditch the attachments, then not only will your email have a smaller footprint, but it will also take up less space in your inbox, which also saves energy. 
You'll also avoid getting those annoying notifications that you're running out of inbox memory space. And tip number three, unsubscribe. You probably have a reminder on your to-do list to unsubscribe from a bunch of emails, and I'm sure that reminder has been there for months. But hey, maybe this video can nudge you to finally do it. Nearly 107 billion spam emails were sent daily in 2019, according to The Good Planet. Now, if every person deleted 10 of those emails, each individual could save 1.7 million gigabytes of storage space and approximately 55.2 million kilowatts of power a day. You can always do these things manually, but it might take you a while. Worry not, there's an app for everything. You can use services like Unroll.me and Unsubscriber to unsubscribe in bulk from all the listers you no longer read or simply never ask to be part of. You can also use services like Clean.email or Maelstrom to delete all the spam or old emails in your inbox that are just taking up space. So send less emails, unattach, and unsubscribe. Those are the three things you can do to reduce your inbox clutter and carbon footprint. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta get back to clearing my own inbox. We'd like to thank Samsung Memory for sponsoring this video. Samsung Memory is creating low power memory chips and SSDs that lowers data center's heat so the planet doesn't have to combat climate change on its own. Click the link below to learn more.